Uh, 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 I don't feel so good now. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 video game anti heroes. Finally, I've got all the Chaos Emeralds. Do it. Time is running short. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. Did you ever consider how the parasite felt? An intelligent cancer ripped from its host? Yeah, I did. Once. Right before I killed it. For this list, we'll be looking at the best anti-heroes in gaming. For the sake of diversity, each franchise will be limited to just one character. Which anti-hero in gaming do you think has caused the most suffering? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Harrier Dubois, Disco Elysium. Due to its amnesia-themed premise, Disco Elysium's protagonist takes a while to remember who he is. Once Harry starts to piece together the fragments of his former self, the character learns that he was once a great detective. But things changed roughly six years before the events of the game. Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. Harry is broken, self-destructive, and prone to off-putting outbursts, traits amplified by his substance abuse issues. The ghost of Harry's past looms throughout the long story as the game takes the lost detective on a journey of discovery, growth, and murder-solving. Okay, this is too busy. Excuse me. Number 19, Zero, Mega Man Franchise. A leader of the Maverick Hunters who faces off against the Reploids, Zero has had to adopt a no-nonsense approach just to keep everything afloat. Compared to X, Zero is a pragmatist who's willing to make the tough choices for the greater good, including killing close friends. In the Mega Man X series, Zero is pretty much a straight-up hero, though he's more ruthless in his spin-off series. Zero yearns for peace, but understands that, in his world, a lot of heads need to roll to achieve it. Number 18. Vito Scaletta. Mafia 2 and Mafia 3. Mama wasn't thrilled when I mentioned your name, though. Now, you know how she is. She wants me to get a straight job. You're gonna look for one. I don't know, but I sure as hell ain't gonna make the same mistake my old man did. The best gangster stories tend to follow a rise and fall formula, and Mafia 2 is no exception. Seeking to escape a lifetime of poverty and to pay off his family's debt, Vito takes to the life of a gangster, a road that leads to riches, tragedy, and a stint in prison. You're under arrest for the illegal distribution of federal ration stamps. You're coming with us. From robberies to hits, Vito does some terrible things throughout the game, but the made man never gets any joy out of these actions. Vito is unassuming, not especially ambitious and quiet. However, he's also greedy, prone to violence when necessary, and grows to become quite bitter by the time Mafia 3 rolls around. He took over the dock union and he's got a warehouse. He has a lot of valuable shit in there. You take both of them out. Greco's finished. Number 17, Travis Touchdown, No More Heroes franchise. In fiction's long history of assassins, Travis Touchdown has perhaps the most bizarre motivation behind his career path. The dude wants to make bank and buy some video games. No More Heroes lives up to its name, especially the first game. Travis goes on a killing spree simply to be the best killer in the business and reap the rewards. Okay, how about this? If I become number one, will you do it with me? Hmm, maybe. While charming and likable, Travis is by no means a good person, but he's also willing to play by this universe's rules. Hey, some dudes are just willing to kill other dudes if it means a night with someone like Sylvia. Sylvia, I can't figure you out. You don't like me? I didn't say that. Number 16, Alex Mercer, Prototype. Ah! 
a virus, an identity crisis, superpowers, and constantly haunted by an army leaves little room for altruism. Alex Mercer spends most of the first prototype trying to stitch together his memories along with the truth behind the outbreak in New York City. Did you ever consider how the parasite felt? An intelligent cancer ripped from its host? Yeah, I did. Once. Right before I killed it. For the most part, Mercer works to stop the actions of Blackwatch and Gentech, but the protagonist shows basically no regard for human life. Even before completely going off the deep end and becoming a pure villain in the second game, Mercer walks a fine line between good and evil during his debut. <laughs> Number 15, Martin Walker, Spec Ops The Line. You got a lock on that transmission? Yes, sir. About 800 yards away. And we're 800 yards away from seeing who's more full of shit. Leading a three-man team into Dubai to track down a wayward colonel, for a majority of the time we spend with him, Walker comes across as a soldier with seemingly respectable intentions driven to commit questionable acts by his situation. Go! Why you still can? While he seems to consider himself a hero for the most part, Spec Ops presents Walker as somewhat of an anti-hero for large chunks of the campaign. At least before that superb final twist that turns everything on its head. You know what they say about hell and good intentions, right? It takes a strong man to deny what's in front of it. Stronger than you were. Number 14. Meta Knight, Kirby Franchise. A touch of mystery goes a long way. Compared to Kirby's overwhelming adorableness, Meta Knight's design screams cool anti-hero. Meta Knight has retained his ambiguous presentation throughout the years, even as his actions have generally grown more irrefutably noble. Meta Knight has an intense but mostly one-sided rivalry with Kirby that is fueled by respect. During the character's earliest appearances, Meta Knight's motivations are largely left up in the air. Even when faced as a boss, he comes across as an honorable opponent rather than an agent of chaos, permitting he's not being controlled. Number 13, Shadow the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Now that was sweet, Shadow. Yeah, well, I'm not here to save you. Sonic might be the personification of the 90s, but the blue blur is unequivocally a traditional hero. Every mascot needs their dark counterpart, and Sonic found his in Shadow. After getting over his initial planet-destroying phase, Shadow settled down as Sega's resident anti-hero, and the Hedgehog can brood with the best of them. Finally. I've got all the Chaos Emeralds. Very much adhering to the ends justify the means mantra, Shadow is ruthless, vicious, and willing to take on both villains and heroes. Shadow is a lot more than just Sonic with a gun, though his backstory is pretty much an angst layer cake. This is who I am. <laughs> Number 12, Max Payne, Max Payne Franchise. Alex had kept me relatively sane for the past three years. Now I didn't know how I felt. Somehow he had stumbled upon something big and ended up stepping on Jack Lupino's toes. An NYPD cop dragged down into the abyss after the brutal murder of his family, Max starts relatively heroic but progressively becomes consumed by vengeance. Going undercover to investigate the Punchinello crime family's involvement with the Valkyr drug, Max takes on a Punisher-esque role that involves leaving mountains of bodies in his wake. After the first game, Max develops into even more of an anti-hero as he loses much of a reason to live, performing some acts that only heighten his guilt. Max doesn't consider himself to be a hero, and that's with good reason. Who's that? Anthony DeMarco is the father of the kid I just shot. Number 11, Agent 47, Hitman Franchise. 
Rico Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done. The best assassin in the business, Agent 47, often targets reprehensible people, giving the bald killer an air of heroism. Even if all of his targets have had it coming, and that's not always the case, Agent 47 is ultimately a grim reaper who profits by spreading death. He's coming for us, and unlike you, he won't hesitate. He's also the ultimate professional and will make sure to see a contract to completion. While the assassin might prefer to keep the body count down to just one, Agent 47 is not above stuffing some unlucky bystanders in closets if they happen to get in the way. If that involves a bullet, so be it. What? All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Number 10, Big Boss, Metal Gear franchise. I'm a CIA agent. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA. Like so many characters in the Metal Gear verse, Big Boss is complicated. Ingrained in the soldier's life, Big Boss sought to create a world that exists in a constant state of war, and in doing so, a haven for his fellow warriors. What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? The mission or your beliefs? As awful of a motive as that is, Big Boss wasn't born a James Bond villain. Naked Snake saved the world multiple times and later on provided support and purpose to soldiers who had been used and discarded. For all of the wretched atrocities he committed, Big Boss still strived to change the world for the better. Okay, I'll keep them busy. Huh? Number 9. Conquer the Squirrel Conquers Bad Fur Day. <laughs> Sorry about that, old chap. <laughs> Gotta go. In the 90s and early 2000s, Rare had the 3D collectathon market cornered. So the studio decided to take a bit of a risk with Conker's first solo home console game. A twisted take on the wholesome Nintendo mascot, Conker drinks, swears, and can be a downright unpleasant squirrel. Okay, who's me? Motivated by Cash, and to a lesser extent, his love for his girlfriend, Conker does help out plenty of people, although he hardly does anything out of the kindness of his heart. Conker, somehow, stumbles tail backward into the Panther Kingdom's throne, and the land might be in for some tough times with this squirrel as its ruler. Oh, no. Of all the people in the world that I don't like, I'm in a room full of them. Number 8. Booker DeWitt, Bioshock Infinite. One does not undertake an experiment knowing one has failed. Can we get back to the rowing? I suggest you do, no, but we're never going to get there. No, I mean I'd greatly appreciate it if you would assist. Perhaps you should ask him. I imagine he has a greater interest in getting there than I do. Nothing is as it seems, and the same goes for Booker. As a soldier, he subjected Native Americans to various unforgivable tragedies in a desperate attempt to reject his heritage. Later on, the death of his wife sent Booker into a spiral, resulting in him selling his only daughter for a clean financial slate. Do it. Time is running short. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. A bout of memory problems and a trip to another dimension leads Booker to Elizabeth. And that's when the protagonist's potential for heroism finally begins to shine. Booker is an anti-hero who flirted with pure villainy for most of his life, and it almost consumed him. He's Zachary Comstock. He's Booker DeWitt. No. I'm both. Number 7. Wario. Super Mario Franchise. <laughs> As an anti-Mario, Wario is lovably greedy and charmingly appalling. While a straight-up villain in games like Super Mario Land 2, Wario takes on an anti-hero role in the Wario Land series, even if any heroics tend to be totally by chance. Oh. 
Wario is primarily driven by his love of shiny things and an innate desire to step out of Mario's planet-sized shadow. While his adventures are nearly always inspired by a promise of treasure, Wario has inadvertently saved lives and defeated some dangerous foes like Rudy and the Golden Diva. Number 6. Edward Kenway, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. Captain Kenway, you have remarkable skills. Oh, thanks, mate. It comes natural. But you're churlish and arrogant, prancing around in a uniform that you have not earned. Romanticism aside, the life of a pirate does not typically attract innocent souls, and Edward is no saint. A tough upbringing fueled Edward's innate desire to make a name for himself, specifically through riches and power. Following a stint as a privateer, Edward found himself sailing the seas with Blackbeard before inheriting his own crew. I'm sorry about this, mate, but I can't risk you telling your Templar friends about me still kicking around. Even after becoming involved with the Assassin and Templar War, Edward remained focused on his own goals, an obsession that sparked plenty of misfortune. Eventually, Edward grew into a far better person and respectable assassin, but that came after years of selfishness. You are a gifted man, Edward. Number 5. Ada Wong, Resident Evil Franchise. Hmm. All right, Simmons, let's see what you're hiding. Ever since debuting in Resident Evil 2, Ada has been tough to pin down. A spy who always does things her way, Ada flip-flops between saving the heroes and aiding Albert Wesker, particularly earlier on in the franchise. If you think I'm going to sit back and be your scapegoat, Simmons, you've got another thing coming. Ada often comes across as an enigmatic agent of chaos, someone who drops in and out of situations and typically leaves a befuddled Leon in her wake. Ada takes on a more proactive and heroic role in Resident Evil 6, but the character is arguably at her best when working from the shadows and with ambiguous motives. Leon, counting on you. I know. Number 4. Nico Bellic, Grand Theft Auto 4. <laughs> no. What do you mean, no? No, I never tell you anything. Another time. Ooh, mystery man. Rockstar and anti-heroes go hand in hand, and GTA has so many of them. Seeking a new life in America, Nico quickly learns that things aren't that different in the land of the free, and before too long, finds himself involved with the Mafia. Get on the floor! Now! But sir! You too! Okay, okay! While prone to violent eruptions and soaked in blood, Nico does not revel in death, and he's generally motivated by his loyalty to his family. Nico does tend to stick up for those who can't protect themselves, while his involvement with the International Affairs Agency forces him to more directly play the part of a hero. Uh, you know what's funny? But I see a lot of me in you. You know why? No. You know there's no good and no evil. Number three, Joel Miller, The Last of Us franchise. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. <laughs> In a world where survival is the only thing that matters, there is no room for traditional heroes. Following the death of his daughter and society's degradation into a cutthroat hellscape, Joel becomes someone prepared to kill to see another day. Son of a bitch! In Alley, Joel finds a surrogate daughter and a reason to live, and thus became all too willing to make the tough choices to keep Ellie safe, regardless of whether she agrees with him or not. Joel's parental desperation to protect his daughter figure is totally understandable, but he would also happily let the world burn if it meant spending another day with Ellie. I know you wish things were different. I wish things were different. But they ain't. Number two, Arthur Morgan, Red Dead Redemption 2. Arthur Morgan's first decent bit of hunting after all these years. Yeah. <coughs> Well, we're on the run now. Everyone's got to do their bit to survive. 
expertly told through Rockstar's epic western, Arthur Morgan goes from a brutal thug to someone who fights to cause a positive change in the world. As a longtime member of Dutch's gang, Arthur believes wholeheartedly in the leader's mantra of seeking a free life away from society's rules. Now you might fancy living on deer piss and rabbit shit. I'm getting too old for that life. As Dutch grows more unhinged and the gang begins falling apart, Arthur recontextualizes his ideals and comes to regret his actions. Permitting players go down the high honor path, Arthur becomes a true anti-hero, someone who selflessly prioritizes the safety of other people above his own. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kratos, God of War Franchise This has nothing to do with her! It has everything to do with her! Put her down! After the Greek gods pushed him too far, the Spartan retaliated to the point he all but destroyed all of creation. As Kratos becomes obsessed with his quest to kill the gods due to one portrayal after another, any semblance of heroism disappears. You owe me this, Kratos. I owe you nothing. By the end of God of War 3, Kratos has brought Greece to its knees, just as much a victim as a contributor to the endless cycle of revenge. If it was not for 2018's God of War, Kratos might be remembered as a bona fide villain who had let his rage wholeheartedly dominate him. <laughs> In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.